All right, we're back here at Castlewood, Marlon and Jamie with you tonight, and we'll be joined also by ARC TV tonight. They'll be picking up on our feed also. Right now, the captains are out on the field. Braden Hatchins for Castlewood, Xavier Sanders, Lucas Chris. And also Forrest McConnell, four captains for uh, uh, Castlewood. Actually, the uh, Lebanon uh, captains, I can't really pick up. I can't get their numbers. It's like Max Boyd is one of them. One of them's 53, think. and I don't have a 53 on my... Yeah, Max Boyd is one, yeah. We'll watch the coin toss and can determine that. Jordan Johnson, another captain, Lebanon won the toss and they will defer. So, Castlewood gets the ball first. It's the Lebanon, Lebanon squad coming on the field now. Uh, Castlewood starters are just coming down the hill out there or a Castlewood uh, squad just coming down the hill getting ready to come through the gate. Pioneers dressed in uh, white jerseys, black pants, and they've got red headgear. Castlewood, a little bit the opposite. They're wearing blue jerseys tonight. they got white uh, pants and white headgear. Not sure who the officials are. We never did get confirmation. Of the we officials. got the candidate for sheriff's department here, Bill Watson, standing behind me. Uh, I didn't go out there and work in my garden today, so he's probably up here chiding me. <laughs> I don't know how long I'll be here, Madison, so just listen. I'll cue you back in. Okay. He's a good boy. You'll have to tell me what to do about that election. Now, I don't mind doing it, but I don't have any idea. What, what you want me to call it in? Or what? Well, what, I guess we'll need to figure that out. Yeah, you can figure it out. Tell me, I can do whatever you want me to.
her back, Castlewood receiving is down here at the first. Great receiving in the second half. Castlewood's receiving takes the L off the field. Let's go, Blue! Kick off. Jimmy Shannon's going to be receiving.
Pisces are being able to kind of do the matter of the same. Just pulling up to the left. Come out of the timeout now. Lebanon looks like they're going to try to put pressure on Castlewood. There's some movement along the front, and I'm not sure which team they got, but the flag flies. They got Castlewood. Now they call offside. Oh, Lebanon. okay. Hmm. Well, he was pointing right at the Castlewood boy. I was watching now on the TV here. Yeah. Well, I think one of the Lebanon boys moved there. I didn't know. It didn't look like he went across, but he must have. As I give Castlewood a first down, they move it up to the Castlewood 48-yard line. They're just near midfield now and trying to get something going. Now Castlewood sends three wide outs to the left, the long, the wide side of the field, one to the right, and they hand it off the running back, and he's hit right in the hole and knocked back. Uh, you can't tell who that was. I think it was Colton. Colton Watson was the first one there, I think. Or, no, it was just Dustin Rose, the first one there. Made the hit. So they lose a yard on that back to the 47. That was Sander on the carry, I think. Houchins. From the shotgun again, still in the spread formation. Fakes a handoff, now he throws it to the short side of the field, deep downfield, and it's caught down near the 20 yard line. Maybe defending uh, Schaus. Schaus with the reception. Good catch, good grab there, Jamie. Uh, maybe it was all over him, and he still hauled it in. About 31 yards, I think, on that one. First and 10, Castlewood. And who caught that one? Uh, uh, Schaus. Schaus. Another first down for Castlewood. They mark the Pioneer 20 yard line. Mark it right on the 20. Yeah, that was a good throw and a good catch. 4-12 left here in the first quarter. 
13 to nothing, Lebanon in front. Hutchins gets out there after running to the sideline, gets out there with the play. And I believe he waited too long. The uh, play clock ran down, delay a game, and they're going to lose five yards. So they're going to have it to have it at the 25 yard line where it'll be first and 15. Houchins throws that ball pretty well, Jamie. He's putting it on the money about every time. They've dropped a couple. It's back up there again. He sends three wide outs to the wide side, one to the right side, the short side. Straight back to pass, throws it over the middle. Got a man open in the middle, complete. Gonna lose Taylor. a couple yards on that one. Lucas Taylor there. Couldn't tell who made the hit. To take him down, he didn't get much run after the catch. Ball up to the 20. About the 23 yard line now. Call it the 22 yard line. Second and 12. Play clock inside of 10 now. Houchins back to pass. Throws a little swing place out in the flat. Complete and drug down out there uh, by Francisco Hernandez. That was, uh, can see who was it caught that ball, Jamie. I think it was. Uh, I think it was McConnell, wasn't it? McConnell. I believe it was McConnell. He lost, what, three on that one? Yeah, it's uh, back now right at the 25-yard uh, line. I think that was uh, Seth Farmer who caught that pass. Back to pass again, and now he's not going to get, be able to get rid of it. Uh, Carter Dillon and... Uh, Got him back at the 34-yard line. It's Carter Dillon. And, uh, so he lost about nine yards on that one. Andrew Calhoun on the tackle there. Uh, they didn't give Calhoun any time to throw it. Houchins to the sideline, back out there on the field with the play now. Running back there beside of him is Seth Farmer. Minute 25 to go here in the first period. Lebanon leads at 13 nothing. Pass out in the flat to the right side. He missed everybody with that one. Intending that one for uh, Forrest McConnell and overthrew everybody. And that'll turn it over to Lebanon. They'll take over on their own 35 yard line. That's gonna be actually about the 34. Looks like where they mark it. Yeah, okay, well. I've already written it down. Too late. <laughs> Got a minute 20 left here, first quarter. The Pioneers lead it 13 to nothing. Reese from the shotgun, two wide outs to the right, one to the left. Reese back to pass, throwing it deep down the right side, and he's overthrown everyone. Intended that one for Baker, I believe. He was streaking down the right sideline, but he was covered pretty well. Pretty well covered, and the ball was overthrown. I don't think that was Baker either. Still hadn't seen his number. Yeah, that was Baker, too. They had him double teamed that time. He was pretty well covered up. He's out there now with uh, Matt Maddox Knuckles with him on that side. Now, Reese gonna run it, runs it off right tackle, ducks to his left, gets, gets open, gets across midfield, and runs out of bounds before he's tackled at about the 49 yard line, 44 yard line actually of, uh, 44 yard line of Castlewood will be first and 10. 21 yards on that carry. So Reese showing him he can run the ball some too. Well, he's pretty athletic. He's he's not slow. 
As I mentioned, he's 6'3", 210. They, they got him listed. Well, I'd say he's there a bit of that. 205, actually. 6'3", 205. He's got two backs back there with him in the backfield now. Back to pass. And Rush run him out of there, and he throws it off the left, completes it to, to Baker. Baker breaks one tackle and gets all the way down near the uh, – inside the 30-yard line, near the 25. I'm going to mark it at the 26, I believe. About 13 or 14 on that one. Reese to Baker for the completion. Pioneers on the march again. They lead this one 13-0 with just uh, – 45 seconds to go here and the clock running in the first period. Reese got Carter Dillon in the backfield with him. He sprints out to his right. Dillon gives him a good block, throws it deep into the corner of the end zone and caught by the Pioneers. That's, I think that's Luke Garrett, wasn't it? Anyway, it's a 26 yard pass. I think it was Luke Garrett, I couldn't tell for sure, in the far corner of the end zone down there. And once again, Carter Dillon will attempt the extra point out of the hold of a Baker, Joe, Toby Baker. And the kick is up and the kick is good. And the Pioneers go up 20 to nothing with 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to High School Football on 107.3 WXLZ. See if we can pick up who makes the plays here on these tackles a little better now. The sun's gone down. <clears throat> Kick is again over to Shouse's side and goes out of bounds. Down about the 10 yard line, somewhere in that neighborhood. And that'll bring it about to 35, is that right? Yeah. Actually a penalty. So Castlewood will get the ball at their own 35. I really don't think you have an option on that one either. No. All right, they're going to put it on the 40, I believe, Jamie. Okay, that may be the rule in high school. Must be. The referee will never mark it down. Now he sets it down right on the 40-yard line. Guess what will have it there. First and 10. They haven't moved the chains on the sideline yet. Uh, now they're holding things up. They don't have the chains. I don't know what the confusion is with them now. Referees are conferring over on the far side with the Castlewood coaching staff, or the Lebanon coaching staff, rather. <coughs> Coach Darrell Taylor over there. I'm still discussing that. The crowd's getting a little antsy now, wanting something done. Now they got it set. A lot of scrimmage and the chains set on the 40 yard line. Houchins from the shotgun, back to pass, looks out to his right. Throws it out there. He's got a man tackled, made by Baker and Hernandez on uh, Cress. Uh, Lucas Cress with the reception. He's going to get about four yards out of it. So it'll be second and six from the 44-yard line of Castlewood. Pioneers leading this one 20 to nothing as we approach the end of the first quarter. And there's... There it is. We've got one quarter in the books. Lebanon leads 20 to nothing over Castlewood here at Castlewood. You're listening to High School Football on 107.3 WXLZ. 
Six now from the 44-yard line of Castlewood. Houchins hands it off inside to uh, Seth Farmer. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Might have gained a yard. I'm going to mark it down right on the 45, so we'll give him a yard, and it'll be third and five. Castlewood trying to get something going here offensively. A lot of short passes haven't thrown it deep much at all. Play clock inside of 10. Houchins finally gets the snap off. Looking deep over the middle. Throws it, throws it deep and almost intercepted. He overthrew his man Taylor and almost intercepted by uh, I think it was Brennan Hess on the coverage there. So it'll be fourth and five. Brennan Hess is the pioneer cornerback over on the near side. Castlewood going to punt it away now. Tell who that is back deep for Lebanon, Jamie. I can't really tell either right now. He gets a kick away, pretty good kick, and the receiver runs away from it, gets out of the way, and it hops straight up in the air and sets down inside the 25 yard line. So I think that was Dylan back deep, but I'm not sure. Baker, maybe. I'm thinking it was Hernandez. Francisco Hernandez, I believe. He stumbled around back there, fell down actually, and tried to stay out of the way of the kick, and he did avoid it. And they have a ball at about the 22 yard line. Reese hands it to Dillon, off of left tackle. He gets about three or four yards across, it's out across the uh, 25. It'll look like about a five yard gain. Spotted down at about the 27 yard line, looks like. Two backs back there with Reese now. He's gonna pass. Throws it out the left to back, swings back down the sidelines, and that is uh, Keith, Caleb Simmons with the reception. Takes it down to about the, gets it out of there to about the 42 yard line, looks like. Where it'll be first and 10 Pioneers. Jimmy Schaus back into the lineup for Castlewood on defense. And now here's a draw up the middle and kicking it outside is Reese. Gets pretty good yardage, gets to the sideline, goes out of bounds after about a 15 yard gain. He gets it into Castlewood territory down near the 44 or 43 yard line. We'll see where they mark it. I think they're gonna market it to 44. Got a hold. Yeah, we got a flag back here on the. It's holding on Lebanon. Line. Holding penalty on Lebanon. That'll mark, nullify that uh, run. You mark it 10 yards off. Back to the 35-yard line. I guess they mark it from the spot of the foul. That's what they did, yeah. Be first down at about 18. Hand off right up the middle. Dillon breaks a tackle. Well, that's Johnson breaking tackles. Gets in the free in the head of everybody for a moment and caught from behind by uh, Jimmy Schaus. Big gain for uh, About Johnson. 28 yards on that one. That Thanks. was Johnson. Yeah, it's Jordan Johnson taking it all the way down to the 
37-yard line of Castlewood. And the Pioneers opening up with a little bit of run here. 9.59 left. It's 20 to nothing. The Pioneers lead it. Hand off again right up the middle. This is Dillon. Dillon cuts it to the outside on the right side. Breaks a tackle to 25, and that finally goes down at about the 20-yard line where he's tackled by Jimmy Schaus. About 15, there's a flag down too. Another flag down, so they're not moving the chains yet. Good run by Carter Dillon. Referee's discussing it. I say they might be talking about a horse collar, but I don't believe that was a horse collar tackle. As they're just saying, picking up a flag, I guess. They pick yeah. up a flag and saying, first down 11 and that's the uh, 20. Well, he had him by the jersey. He didn't have the pad. And, no, 21-yard uh, line. Good game, though, down. for the first down. Nine minutes, 40 seconds left here in the first half. Reese with three wide outs to the left, one to the right. He hands it off to Dillon, cuts it outside to the left, breaks one tackle, breaks another one, finally gets hit and taken down inside the 15-yard line. We're going to pick up about nine on that one. 13 or 14. Need to take it to about the 11 for a first down. Gonna be second and about eight. Or second and two, rather. Picked up eight on it. Reese in the shotgun, back to pass. Looking over the middle, guns it that way. Got a man open. Touchdown, Pioneers. That's Baker, wasn't it? Baker, I believe. Yes, it's Toby Baker. So the Pioneers go up 26-0 and the extra point to come. Baker will hold for the kick by Carter Dillon. Kick is up and the kick is good. Lebanon goes up 27-0 with 8.48 remaining here in the First half. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to High School Football on 107.3 WXLZ. Yeah. All right, back here. We've got 8.48 left here in the first quarter, and the Pioneers with uh, four touchdowns so far, leading Castlewood 27 to nothing. Lebanon preparing to kick off once again. Wes Harvey back there now for Castlewood, along with uh, Lucas Kress. I don't know if Chouse is hurt or not, but he's not to back there to receive this time. Dylan. Carter Dillon will kick it again. And he hits it down the left side and close to going out of bounds. But it finally skirts around and goes actually into the end zone where it'll be automatic touchback. The ball hits the ground. It has some action on it. It <laughs> rolled about 30 yards yeah, right into kinda, the end zone. Kind of curving away from the sideline, too. The castle like... back picked it up, but he was standing in the end zone. And, of course, you, in high school, you can't run it out of the end zone. That was Wes Farmer that chased it down. He was afraid he wasn't going to be able to get on it, I think, if it stayed short of the goal line. So Castlewood will have it first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. They send three wide outs to the left, one to the right. And Houchins throws a little swing pass to his back out in the flat, and he's gonna lose yardage, I believe. Mm 
That was Farmer on the catch. Farmer on the catch, and it looked like Baker may be in on the tackle. No, Jordan Johnson in on the, on the tackle there. He lost, what, about five yards on that one, didn't he? Yep. Back to the 15. Yeah, it'll be second and 15 from the 15-yard line. Farmer back there in the backfield with Houchins. Houchins throws it out to Farmer to the right and right through his hands. Pioneers go to pick it up, but it's ruled an incomplete pass. It's close to being a lateral, I think. But did get it forward a little bit. 8 one to go now in the first half. Pioneers leading Castlewood 27-0. I think they called that an incomplete pass. Yeah, it was incomplete. Third and 15. Castlewood trying to get out of a hole. They're backed up their own 15-yard line. Lebanon shifting around on the line. Now Houchins throws it deep down the left sideline. Got a man out there, but it's knocked away by uh, Eli Cook knocked right. it away. Good coverage by Cook that time, so pass Castlewood, it'd be fourth and long. Pass and, uh, was intended for Jimmy Shouse. He was covered pretty well by Cook. <laughs> Snaps a little high, but he gets a kickoff. And it's going to be short, but take a Castlewood bounce. Out near midfield, he gets it. Uh, didn't get it out of Castlewood territory. They covered her about the 46 yard line off Castlewood, where the Pioneers will have a first and 10. Seven forty-nine left here, opening quarter. It's 27 to nothing, the Pioneers with the lead. I think that was Jimmy Shouse kicking up. I believe Shouse did the other punt too. He got about 25 yards on that one. That was the second punt, or third, I believe the third punt. But I really haven't been charting them. Pioneers send uh, Jordan Johnson out wide to the right, two wide outs to the left. Slot man Baker comes in motion, the handoff up the middle to Dillon. He gets about four yards, maybe five. Let's see where they mark it, mark it at the 41 yard line. So. You're going to have about a five-yard gain. It'll be second and five for the Pioneers. Maddox Knuckles goes out and you tell who came in over on the far side for him. Leveling with three wide outs to the left, one to the right. Reese gets run into by his halfback, throws it out in the flats to Jordan Johnson, I think, no, to Baker, I believe. I think it was Baker. Yeah. Short game. He got it out close to the uh, 35, about the 36-yard line, where it'll be third and a little less than a yard. See what they do here. They may want to throw one deep, thinking they can get it on fourth down anyway. Now they're going to hand it off up the middle. Uh, Dylan, I believe, is gang tackled after he gets the first down. Picked up a couple there, three-one. Carter goes off now, and uh, Jordan Johnson operating at the running back back there with Johnson back there with Chris or with uh, Mike Reese. Hand off to Johnson. He goes off tackle and comes open a big hole around the end. Darts by one man. Gets all the way down the inside the 10-yard line before he's finally drugged down on the far side over there. By a couple of Castlewood tacklers and one of them slow to get up and now he's up. Picks up 20-something there, Merle. Big game. Gets it down to the... Uh, Got it down to about the seven or eight yard line. Call it the eight. 
Neither team's gone under center any at all here. And from a shotgun handoff this time, right up the middle. I think that was uh, Caleb Simmons, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Simmons. For the touchdown. Eight yards Eight for yard a touchdown. 33-0, touchdown. Lebanon. Carter Dillon to do the extra point. Toby Baker to hold. Kick is up and the kick is good. Trying to see who the long snapper is, but I can't can't get a good beat on him in the crowd down there. So we'll take a break here with Lebanon leading 34 0, 555 to go in the first half. Like Shouse and Chris back there again deep. Dylan's kick is to the left side. Taken to Chris. He runs it back towards the middle. Gets an opening up the middle. Comes clear. And nice run back. Finally knocked down. Out about the 40, about the 43 yard line. As he came clear there one time and then somebody got him from the side. That was a good run back. Oh, I'm, not, out sure, to, I'm uh, not sure if that was Shouse or if it I was... I think it was Shouse. I thought it might have been Wes Harvey. He was back there one time deep to receive a kick. I'm not sure. Anyway, good return. Gives Castlewood good field position at their own 43-yard line. First and 10 from there. Houchins hands off to his back this time, and he's hit in the backfield. That's Farmer. He's probably going to lose a yard, maybe. Looks like Robert Stevenson in on that tackle. Robert Stevenson, Francisco Hernandez are two of the inside linebackers for the Pioneers doing a lot of the grunt work on the defense. Houchins takes the snap, looks out to his right, throws it quick, and it's incomplete. Intended for uh, Lucas Kress out on the right flat. Almost no offense for Castlewood, though, Merle. No, they just haven't been able to put much together. Crest coming back to the huddle, holding his hands, but he must have hurt his hand a little bit, but he got back out there. Third and 11. Three wide outs right, one to the left. Houchins takes a snap, retreats to pass, throws it deep down the left side. That's McConnell out there, and he makes a good catch. He got hit right at the same time he caught it uh, by uh, Eli Cook. And he held on, and the flag flies. I'm not sure if they called a targeting or what. That's what Castlewood's want. I couldn't tell if he hit him helmet to helmet or not, Jamie. Uh, they probably call pass interference. Maybe. But he caught it anyway, so... What do you call targeting, Jamie? That's going to give him another 15 yards. And you know, they just called a blow to the head. I don't know. I don't know if that's targeting in high school or not. If that's the case, it's like it is in college, and Eli Cook will have to leave the game. So 15-yard penalty takes that ball down inside the 20-yard line. They've got it about 19. First and 10. Houchins throws it quickly out to the right and dodging tacklers for a moment and then not being able to get anywhere upfield with it. Yes. Uh, he's going to pick up a number out there. That looked like Luke Taylor. He lost a yard, didn't he? I think 
That's Taylor. So second and 11. I guess we don't have his number here. Spread formation again, two wide outs each way. Back to pass. Throwing over the middle, got a man open and a big hit. Made, he couldn't hold on. So that's Eli Cook with the hit again on the receiver. That was, uh, Sh uh, not Shouse, but Chris, Lucas Chris. He had the ball down close to the goal line, had it, but it looked like the 11 the defender might have jarred that ball loose. Ruled incomplete. That'll bring it back third down and about 11. Castlewood trying to get on the scoreboard here, deep into Lebanon ter territory. Big rush put on the quarterback, throw out to the left to Shouse, and the pass is incomplete. Coverage there by Hernandez and, and Chris, uh, Hernandez and uh, Cook. He and had that ball, but then dropped it. Brings up fourth down, doesn't it? Yeah, it's fourth, and uh, ball just at the 21-yard uh, line, I think, or at the 11-yard line. That's a 21, I believe. That's a 21-yard line. Yeah. See what Houchins comes up with this time. Throws it out to the right. Got a man open, but it's incomplete. Kind of missed his man that time. Threw it a little behind him. Not sure who that was intended for. But anyway, the Pioneers will take over now. First and 10. At their own, I think, 21-yard line. I think it was intended for uh, Sander. Xavier Sanders, I think. So Lebanon gets the ball turned over to them. Blue the ball's on the 19-yard line, Merle. 3.54 remaining in the first half. Reese set to go with the offense now as he sends two wide outs over on the far side, two to the near side. Ball near the right hash mark. He's going to throw it deep down the left side. He's got a man down there, single coverage, and it's incomplete as both of them battle for the ball. Now they're going to throw a flag and say it was interference, I think, Jamie. Looks like they're both just battling for the ball there. Can't tell who that pass was intended for all the way on the far side. I think it might have been Luke Garrett. He comes out there hobbling a little bit. It is Luke. But anyway, that'll cost Castle with 15 yards. And it'll be a first down for the Pioneers. Moves the ball up to the uh, 36 yard line. Should go to the 36, yeah. Pass interference in high school, 15 yard penalty. There's a toss to the running back going wide to the left. He gets to the sideline all the way near the 45-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. I believe we're going to market it to 44, maybe. I have no idea who ran that ball. I think it was the halfback that was in there. I don't know if it was Dylan or Johnson or who. They may be using... Might have been Caleb people. Taylor. Those white jerseys, once it gets dark, are a little bit hard to see, the numbers. Here's a toss to the running back again, coming out of the backfield to the right, coming right at us. Cuts it back inside. That's Carter Dillon. That's Dillon, okay. He gets him into Castlewood territory across midfield, down to the 46-yard line. Enough for the first down. Dillon's going to go out now, and Jordan Johnson comes in at the halfback position. Knuckles over on the right side here. Wide out to throw is back to the left side. He got his man complete to Baker at the 40-yard line. Breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, and then drags a tackler with him down inside the 35-yard line. Enough for another first down. So with 243 to go in the 
first half. Pioneers on the move again. Baker's going to leave and go to the sideline. Boy, he's a good receiver, Merle. Yes, he is. Pass out to the right now. And that's uh, Mabry with the catch and run into the middle of the field. He gets good yardage. Another first down. It's a down to about the 16-yard line or 17. It's called the 17. <laughs> Reese set to go again. Now this time hands it to Carter Dillon, and he's tackled immediately and a good hit in the backfield. So we can pick up a number there. I believe that was uh, Jimmy Schaus with the hit on. I don't think he, he might. He gained a yard on the play. Hand off again to Dillon, and he gets tripped up again. This time in the backfield before we can get to the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose back to about the original line of scrimmage. Be third and ten. Reese looks to the sideline. Looks like Jordan Johnson back there with him in the backfield. He sprints out to his right, throws it into the end zone. Got a man out there, but it's knocked away. Incomplete. Play made by Schaus on the receiver. Clark stops with a minute 16 to go here in the first half. That receiver was Mabry out there trying to catch that one. It was incomplete. 34 to nothing, the Pioneers lead it here. I bring up a fourth down, won't it? Fourth and about 10. Looks like the Pioneers gonna try a field goal. Yeah. Carter Dillon gonna try a field goal out of the hold. Of They'll spot it on about Baker. the 23 yard line. Everybody walking around there now like it's a timeout or something. I believe the Pioneers might have called a timeout. Uh, I guess they did. I'm not sure. I think it's, the play clock was about to run out. So they called timeout. We'll stay here with them for the end of this first half. See if they still try a field goal. Don't believe they're going to, Jamie. They're going to try to run a play. Johnson's in there at the halfback position. Knuckles out wide to the right. Here's a pass into the end zone. Got a man open. That's Knuckles, I believe. No, it wasn't Knuckles. Knuckles is back here towards us. Complete for the touchdown. Is that Baker? Tell who that was. That was Baker on the reception for the touchdown. Now Dillon will try the extra point to make it 41-0. Kick is up and the kick is good. So with a minute 10 remaining in the first half, Lebanon leads Castlewood 41-0. We'll be back with the kickoff in a moment. You're listening to High School Football on 107.3 WXLZ. One thing about that clock will run. One ten left here in the first half. Pioneers preparing to kick off once again. Crescent shouts back deep for Castlewood. Carter Dillon has it teed up right in the middle of the field on the 40 yard line. <coughs> I 
I think they can if they want to kick it from either hash mark, can't they? Yeah, I think you can. He kicks it from the kick middle and gets a good foot into to, this I one. Think. Taken at the 16 yard line by. That was Farmer with the return uh, instead of uh, Shouse back there. And Farmer brings it all the way out to the 37 or 8 yard line. Go pretty, good, pretty good run back. He just came straight up the field and uh, plowed right into two Lebanon defenders. 38 yard line. So Castlewood has it at the 38 yard line. Only a minute six left here in the first half. Hutchins brings them out of the huddle, sends wide outs to both sides. This is Shouse out here on the near side closest to us. He looks that way, throws it deep for McConnell. It's almost intercepted, but right through the hands of uh, a Le Lebanon defender. So he stepped in front of uh, Farmer, and that was Eli Cook again. He should have had the interception there, Jamie. Yeah, that just came down it. right in his hands. <laughs> just, just missed it. That's all it was to it. Second and ten, Castlewood now with a 101 to go in the half. From the 38-yard line of Castlewood. Hand off to the halfback farmer. He runs to the right side. Gets to about the line of scrimmage and not much more. He might have got a yard. Give him two yards to the 40, so it'll be second or third and eight. Houchins to the sideline, gets the play and back into the huddle quickly. Play clock down inside of 10 seconds. Houchins going to get it off in time, looks like. He does and pitches a little shovel pass inside to, to uh, Taylor. Uh, not sure who that was. Picks up about a yard on the play. And that's it. That ends the first half. Our score is 41 to nothing. The Pioneers lead it. We'll take a break. We'll come back and look at some halftime stats. You're listening to High School Football on WXLZ. <laughs>
That's Dylan back there, I think, by himself, I think. Is it? No, that's, uh, that's, Luke, that's Luke Garrett back there. It's Luke Garrett back deep. Set to go, so Harvey's going to kick it. He does. He kicks it down the middle on the ground. It's grabbed and fallen on by a couple of pioneers there. One of the up men hit it. Knocked it down and they fell on it. Luke Garrett covered it, so Pioneers have first and ten from their own 32 yard line. Official hadn't set the play clock in motion, now he does. And Pioneers trying to get everybody lined up. They're sending three wide outs to the left. One of those out there is Mabry, I can tell. Fake on the handoff, and Reed turns the corner. 
Uh, comes around the corner on a, after the fake down the sideline. He's all the way into Castlewood territory and finally run out of bounds down around the 15-yard line before they caught up with him. He faked that ball on the first play. Good, good opening play by Darrell Taylor, Coach Taylor, Jamie. Fake that ball up the middle. that running back and took off, and uh, I thought he was going to go all the way. <coughs> Big gainer there, though. So they take it down to the 14-yard uh, line. Looks like a 15. It's right on the 15. And is there a timeout? Cashwood took a timeout, yeah. We'll take it with them. You're listening to high school football on WXLZ. The clock runs and resell the shotgun. He hands it this time to Dylan, and the ball's on the ground. And didn't hand it to anybody really. Yeah, that ball just came loose. Came loose. Went right through Dylan's arms. And uh, Pioneers either, evidently got it back. Either Reese or Dylan won. Got on it there. Lost a yard on the play and be second and 11 on the 21 yard line or 16 yard line rather, excuse me. Now there's a handoff to Dylan right off left tackle, big hole. He rambles all the way down inside the five and the ball comes out again. Castlewood picks it up and runs it back out to the 15 or 20 yard line. We'll wait and see where they mark it down. It's over on the far side. As Dylan is down close close to the goal line, I think. Yeah, Jimmy. he. Yeah, I thought he was going to score, but uh, uh, ball came loose. Castlewood picked it up, so. Uh, Placing down on the 15, I think. Quick turnover by the Pioneers here in the second half. That happened in the first, first quarter, too. <coughs> Houchins. From the shotgun, throws it out to the left. Incomplete. Somebody got a hand on that one, I think. Knocked down there before it got out there. Not sure who that was. Uh, I think it was Brandon Hess that got a hand on that one. <coughs> so it'll bring up second and 10 from the 15 yard line. Houchins takes a snap, retreats to pass, throws it deep on the left side, and nobody there. The receiver, Taylor, Caleb Taylor, cut inside, and Houchins obviously thought he was going to cut outside, and he threw it to nobody. Yeah, so they didn't really connect on that one. Eli Cook and uh, Brennan Hess out there to cover. Hess is on the corner, and Cook playing safety. So third and ten for Castlewood. Pioneers playing four-man front. Houchins wants to throw it again, throws it deep on the right side, and it's knocked down again. Almost almost intercepted by Mabry, but he couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, he uh, had a bead on that one. Had good coverage on Taylor. <clears throat> And that one went right through his arms. So it's fourth and probably a punting situation for Castlewood. That was uh, Schaus that was on, uh, on the receiving end of that pass. Couldn't gather it in and almost intercepted Schaus a punt now. Gets off a short punt. Hits at about the 37 or 8 yard line. And Castlewood player touched it there on about the 38, 39 yard line. So that's where the Pioneers will put it in play. The market on the 39, I believe. 
That's crazy. Marked it on the 42 yard line. I didn't see that, did you? No, they had marked on the 38. Well, Castlewood player touched it back on the 38. That's yeah. where the ball ought to go. That is on the 42. I guess none of the officials saw that. Reese takes the snap, runs right up the middle, struggling through tackles and drags a couple with him to about the 37 yard line. Picks up pretty good yardage on that one. 36 we call it, Marcus, 36. The second and about four. I'd say Levin will run it quite a bit now. No, he's going to throw it. Reese held on yeah, to he it. Held on to it and took it up the middle, didn't he? Yeah. Picks up several yards. Got, seven, got six, seven yards on that. First, first down with it. He got, got it down to the 30-yard uh, line. Yeah, he threw that ball, drew back, and threw full arm there and held <laughs> on to the football. I don't know if his receiver was covered or whether that was just part of the play. He fakes the hand off to the tailback this time, busted play, and goes down at about the... Reese tried to run it then. He gets it to about the 27 or 8, 28 yard line, call it. Yeah, he picked up a couple yards on that one. That's a busted play, I think. He turned it, handed off, and the back wasn't there. Snap back. Hand it to Johnson. Johnson off tackle, and he's going to take it to the house. Nobody touched him, Jamie. Touchdown, Jordan Johnson. He got pretty good speed. Yes, he has. He took that one about, what? 28 yards, 28 yards think, yeah. 28 yard touchdown by Jordan Johnson. That makes it 48 to nothing. <coughs> Clock running with 420 to go here in the third quarter. And Dylan gets back out there quickly with the tee to try to tackle on the extra point. Snap good, down, kick is up. Good. We thought that extra point, first eleven and touchdown. We thought it was no good, and uh, yeah, that's right. We went all the way to the half with, but then at the half, the referee looked up there and told us it was good. So <laughs> we added one point to it. it was Chris, both back there. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Kick goes to the right and goes out of, out of bounds over there. So they bring it out to the 40, I suppose. They brought it to the 40 the other time, so I'm sure that's where it will be. Referee places it down on the 40, and it'll be first and 10 Castlewood from the right hash. A minute and a half to go here in the third quarter as Castlewood approaches the line. And off to the halfback, run to the left. This is Farmer, I think. Breaks a tackle at the 50. And goes down inside Lebanon territory where he's knocked out of bounds at about the Lebanon 38-yard line. So we first gainer there. Biggest run from scrimmage <clears throat> for Castlewood tonight, I believe. By far. So we first and 10, Castlewood from the Lebanon 38-yard line. Houchins directing traffic, looking to the sideline for his, for help. 
He takes the snap, back to pass, throws it out in the flat, complete to McConnell, and McConnell drug out of bounds by Eli Cook. Got Go down about to 33, I think, Merle. So gain of five. So first and should be second, and second and five. And yeah. Second and five from, from yeah. the Pioneers have a lot of white jerseys out there. They uh, substitute, and that's the end of the third quarter. We'll break away, come back with fourth quarter action in a moment. Lebanon leads 49 0. You're listening to high school football on 107 3 WXLZ. Well, that's a Pioneer 38 yard line. Yes, we're looking to get on the board here in the fourth quarter. Handoff inside, breaking a tackle is Farmer, and it's down inside the 30-yard line. It's like he's close to first down yardage. We'll see. I think you've got it marked at 29. That'll be about a yard short. So it'll be third and one. Third and one to Castlewood from the uh, Lebanon 29 yard line. Well, we've got a minute. Honecker and Grundy play next week. We'll have that game on WXLZ. Alchin's set to go now. Takes a snap. Hands it to his running back up the middle. It's a couple of yards inside before he's knocked down. I think it was uh, Seth Sifford with the carry for Castlewood. Sifford gets enough for the first down. Get it down to the 27 yard line where it'll be first and 10 Castlewood. It's about as deep as they've gotten into Lebanon territory, Jamie. That's right. <laughs> There's the throw out in the flat. It's complete to Schaus. And he's tackled there by 51 and 84. That, that would be, uh, I don't have uh, Connor Bowman. And I don't have an 84 on the roster here. I'm not sure who that is. They spotted that to find her 23 yard line. So it'll be second and about, I don't know, we'll call it six. Alchin's back to pass, throws it out in the flat and left, complete, and tackle there is Taylor, I believe. Anyway, that's good for a first down, so it'll be first and 10 for Castlewood, the ball just outside the 15-yard line. Castlewood in the spread as they've been the whole time. <coughs> Alcha takes a snap. Throws it out in the flat to Taylor. Taylor breaks the tackle and then his gang tackle as he gets down close to the 10 yard line. <coughs> we'll have to wait and see where they're going to spot it as the Pioneers carried him back a pretty long way. Spot it down at the, right at the 10, just, yeah, down, just outside, just the, outside about, the 10, about, I believe. About 11. Now here's a pass into the end zone. Caught, touchdown, Castleman. McConnell, Force McConnell with the grab. Pass from uh, Houchins to McConnell for the Castlewood touchdown. <clears throat> he got in front of that uh, Defender and kind of shielded him off. Yeah, that was a good, good, good play. Throw. Yeah, it was a good throw, but good throw. Houchins too. Houchins throws the ball pretty well. I think really. McConnell was a quarterback last year, wasn't he? I think so. Yeah, they had him listed as a quarterback running back here on the chart. Castlewood's going to attempt the extra kick, extra point. To mm -hmm. 
Shouse will attempt the extra point. Cress will hold. Snap is a little high, and, and Cress going to have to try to run out there with it, and he's not going to get anywhere. His pioneers track him down, two or three pioneers on top of him over on the far sidelines. He tried to get around the end, and Castlewood finally on the board. Our score, 48-6 Lebanon with 7.15 to go here in the ball game. Castlewood preparing to kick off. Uh, Both teams getting a few clean jerseys in there, Jamie. Yeah, the Pioneers had, I think, all of their defense was white jerseys. I mean, they weren't dirty at all. So Coach Taylor uh, substituting liberally. I wouldn't be surprised to see a whole new offense this time, too. Short kick is taken at about the 42-yard line and run back in, into Castlewood territory by uh, Eli Cook. Before he's knocked down, it's the Castlewood 48. So the Pioneers will have first and 10 from that point. 5.40 to go in the game and the clock running. Reese still in there, quarterback. Takes a snap and hands it to his running back behind him. And I'm not sure who that is, Jamie. That's 83. We don't have an 83 on the roster, do we? No, I don't have one here either. <coughs> Got two rosters and don't have an 83 on either one of them. They're just now getting the chain set over on the far side. Hand off the running back again. This time it's uh, 80. Kent Newberry. He gets the ball down to Castlewood 40. They got about five, five on that one. It's going to be third and about five. That's about to 43. Hand off the halfback again. Up the middle. He's got enough for first downs. He struggles through a couple of tackles. Braden Keen, I think, on that carry. You're right. So that is enough for the first down. Clock's moving, though. We've got only 350 left in the game. 48 to, or 40, yeah, 48 to six, I believe, our score. Pioneers well in command. Taking our time getting started here. They got personnel problems. Baker comes out on the field. It's like Baker's going to quarterback, Jamie. Yeah, I think he's a backup quarterback. Bad, yeah. uh, bad yeah. snap of ball, the ball. Loose, and Baker finally gets to it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't decide who's going to grab that ball. Castle's trying to grab it, and Levin's trying to grab it back, and then knocked it back. Baker fell on it. Big loss on that one. But mostly, uh, most of the problem came from a snap, which wasn't too good. Yeah. Probably got a new center in there. Baker looking to the sideline. I think Baker's a pretty good quarterback in his own right. I don't Probably think would be. I don't think he's had much opportunity to play. Uh, another uh, high, another snap. high snap picked up by Keene. Keene's slung down. The ball comes loose, and Baker falls on it again. Back at the 
50 yard line. So Pioneer's definitely going in the wrong direction. <laughs> Sure. It's going to be third down. A whole lot. They've got to get the ball down to uh, inside the 25-yard line. So, uh, ball back on the 49. It'll be third down. See if they throw it here. I wouldn't think they would. I wouldn't think he'd try to throw it. Baker once again in the shotgun. The snap goes to the halfback, running mm -hmm. off the left side, gets a pretty good yardage. Takes it down inside the 40. So a host of Castlewood players. Pretty big game. game. Who, who was that running the ball? Was that? Uh, I think it was King. King. Yeah, Braden King. I think that's right. who it is, yeah. I think you're right. So it's fourth down, still a whole lot. See if they snap it directly to Keene again. Baker's the quarterback. Baker takes a snap, fakes the handoff, goes around right in, and gets pretty good yardage. Could go all the way, and finally knocked down, down inside the 20. That's enough for a first down, though, so the Pioneers picked up a huge hunk of ch uh, ch uh, yardage on that exchange. <clears throat> it was third and about 30, but they got the first down. But uh, subs are looking to see if they can't score. But the clock's uh, running there. Clock's down to 40 seconds. This probably be the last play. Keene started to go off. Now he's back in there. Somebody else runs off in a hurry. Baker goes under center and takes a knee. That's going to do it, I think. Yeah, that's that's going to do it. That's the ball game. Final score: 11 and 49. Is that 48? It's 48, isn't it? I believe it's 48 to six. 48 I believe to six. That's the score. Final score. Anyway, uh, both teams coming out now. They'll meet in the center of the field and shake hands. So, big win for the Pioneers. I know uh, that runs their record to one and three now. I know they're really tickled to win a game. Castlewood, I think, goes to 2-0-3, oh, I think. A reminder there, next week, uh, Honecker and Grundy, that was always uh, one of the big games in the Black Diamond District. Honecker now in the Hogahigi, but uh, still probably be a lot of feeling in that game. So and that's the game we'll have on WXLZ next week. Thank you, Madison. We'll talk to you later.